risk so we are trying to understand risk where we talked about beta okay okay that beta measures the risk okay so let's understand what is this beta and what is there is there any other statistical measure the risk to which a security is exposed plan can be classified in two groups so there are two kinds of risk when we you know put our money in stock market or any share so there are two kinds of risk which you take fine so that is called the total risk first is called the unsystematic risk okay which is called the company specific risk when we are putting our money in a company like reliance or hero moto corp or any company in india or abroad so the first risk is called unsystematic risk which is nothing but company specific risk asset specific risk okay so this is also called a specific risk as the risk is related to company's performance fine because some companies may do well or some companies may not do well over a period of time so when we put our money we find that you know money is either sometime growing sometime it is coming down okay so the risk associated with a particular company is called the company specific risk okay this risk ab next se padhna isko main padh le raha this type of risk can be reduced or eliminated by diversification so the risk which we assume which is called company specific risk we can always do away with risk when we invest in our money in stocks by diversification if we you know diversify ourselves of various companies you know at a time we don't buy just one company we buy many companies okay this is also called diversifiable risk now just to give an example you know about more than 10 years back uh, you know when i i mean of course i started much earlier investing in stocks i bought maruti i invest 1 lakh rupees in maruti and they were saying that that time maruti was 1000 rupees as we speak it is above 10000 but that time you know the company was supposed to do very well so people advised and there was a lot of i mean advice given by the financial analyst that maruti is going to do very well so i put 1 lakh rupees in maruti so i put 1 lakh rupees in maruti what happened in a week's time the maruti stock crashed by 50% it came to 500 rupees from 1000 it came to 500 why it happened because there was a strike in manesa and uh, the company you know there was some kind of a uh, uh, i mean uh, employee strike there was one employee who was killed also and maruti company closed down the manesa plant closed down and there was uncertainty when it will open so markets don't like uncertainty so the share price dropped by 50% so at put 1 lakh it became 50000 rupees in a matter of one week so that risk which i was wearing was call, called company specific it was not like reliance tanked by 50% at the same time or any other company like hero cracked by 50% it is not only maruti specific uh, you know stock because it was hit by a strike and maruti uh, you know suzuki was closed down and they were not knowing when it will open again so it closed down and the stock price tumbled by 50% so that risk which i took was company specific risk okay but had i invested in uh, 1 lakh rupees in 20 companies 5000 rupees each in say reliance hero moto corp infosys like this i would have not suffered this loss isn't it so by diversification because some companies may do good maruti tanked by 50% maybe reliance discovered something new new oil well which would boost up their profits so they went up by say 10% some others went up higher so overall there will be some pluses and minuses in each of my portfolio which will you know cancel out either a gain or loss in my portfolio which means that i am not going to gain anything rather a very small gain or small loss will happen to my portfolio if i had invested in a portfolio rather than in one stock is that okay so the this risk can be diversified if we are not investing just in one stock we are investing in multi assets okay systematic risk the second risk which is called the market risk or rather the first risk is micro risk the second risk is macro risk the economic factors which play out sometimes and which actually make a country to grow much faster compared to others or the economic situation or eco system is so good that the interest rates are coming down okay there's a good monsoon in india lot of good factors which help the uh, the economy to do well 
because of the macro factors. So if the macro factors come down and there is a recession, all the, I mean, uh, the companies may lose money. Okay. Because if the interest rate come down, so the companies who have borrowed money, they have to pay lower interest on their loans. So their profits will boost it. Some companies are interest rate sensitive. For example, you know, they are selling goods uh, like cars, houses. So interest rate come down. So EMI drops. So you borrow more money and, you know, propel the, those businesses, which are based on lower interest rate uh, scenario. Those companies do well, like white goods companies like, you know, car manufacturing, uh, washing machine, computers, which we always borrow money and, you know, uh, take money from the loan most of the time. So if their interest rates come down, the economy is doing well. So people always, uh, you know, either borrow money and buy these goods or even without borrowing, they, they borrow uh, buy these products. So that risk is called the market risk, which is called systematic risk. Each company will, you know, react to favorable micros or unfavorable micros depending upon how sensitive it is to the interest rates or how sensitive it is to the various other things. So the petrol prices starts coming down. So some companies do well, some companies doesn't have any impact because of the petrol price. Infosys will not, you know, rise because the petrol prices are coming down. Maybe, you know, Hero Moto Corp or, you know, Maruti will do well, isn't it? So these factors are macro factors. Okay. If like, you know, uh, the forex risk, if the, you know, dollar becomes more expensive or Indian rupee depreciates, many companies will lose their profitability. But many companies will have good profitability. All exporting companies will do well. All the importing companies will, uh, you know, their share prices are going to react negatively. Isn't it? Like, for example, Asian paints. You know, their uh, main raw material is derived from petroleum product. When the petrol prices go up, Asian paints come down. When the, Asian, when the petrol prices come down, the Asian paints share price goes up. So all companies have different, different way they react to the, all the macro factors are prevailing in the economy. So just read. So these are the factors, you know, which when will play out, these are called macroeconomic or market risk. So this, you know, normally when we invest in equities, okay, if there is a risk, then only the stock will go up, you know, the, the, without taking risk, you can't earn money. Okay. So you don't want to diversify away this market risk, but you want to diversify away the company specific risk, isn't it? There's a two kinds of risk, which you always are live in, in, in stock markets is one is called the the company specific risk and other is called the market risk. So company specific risk you eliminate by putting your money in a portfolio, by putting your money by diversification. But you don't want to diversify. You don't want to, you know, get away with this risk because this is the risk which will give you a return. Okay, fine. Is that okay? So you don't want this risk to go away because this risk will generate more returns for you at times when the economy is good. So you start putting money only when you think that the economy is going to do well. Okay, fine. But at times it may happen, the economy may not do well, your stock may go down. But you think the longer time, the risk is getting captured because the on a longer time frame, we find that the companies do well. I mean, there's lots of ups and down in between, but the, the stock prices keep growing because the Indian economy is growing. Though it may find, you know, period of COVID or period of some kind of a, uh, you know, uh, happening in, uh, I mean, warlike situations or something, it may keep coming. Okay. The Middle East kind of, you know, scenario where, you know, a lot of things are, which are happening in the Middle East, which like, you know, which can negatively impact the share market because the petrol prices may go up because of some kind of, a uh, now the Hamas and Israel war. So, okay. So that means the model which we are talking about to calculate the cost of capital should capture only the, the market risk and not the company specific risk. So this formula takes care of that. Okay. The beta is the market risk 
Whereas there is another statistical measure which is called the standard deviation. How volatile is the stock? The standard deviation captures the total risk of a company. Okay. So there are two measures in finance. Of course, they are not, you know, like uh, well, so sacrosanct and so like a Bible. It's not like that. But these, uh, you know, statistical formulas tells you how risky is the company. How risky is not the company. Okay. So the standard deviation measures the total risk, which takes care of the company specifics as well as the market risk. Whereas the beta captures only the market risk. Okay. So you must understand beta is capturing only the market risk. Okay. And how we'll understand that. Now, just to, you know, give you a perspective, you just open this file, which I've shared with you on your, uh, which is called sharp ratio formula, which is called sharp ratio. Okay. So we learn, we are going to do a sharp ratio also later on, but uh, the idea is to understand the risk. So uh, my folder is called weekend. So I'll open this. So, uh, uh, have you got this open with you? Just open if you have your laptops. There is a file which I have shared on Google Classroom, which is the name by Sharp Ratio. <laughs> now, let's look at two stock, two stocks hypothetically, stock X and stock Y. Okay, it can be any, it can be Reliance, Infosys, whatever. And there is a fixed deposit column. Okay, fine. So there is a five-year returns are given to you. Each year, how much that stock has given, that return is captured in my column number E and column number F. So in the first year, stock X gave a 20% positive return. Stock Y gave you 16% return. So we can always calculate this return. I'll tell you how to calculate for any given stock. So we're going to do that exercise just shortly. Then stock 2, uh, in the year 2, it gave minus 20% return. So the market can go up and down. We don't know. Okay. So third year, it gave 32% and correspondingly, the other stock is also changing. Okay. Then fourth year, fifth year. So ultimately, we got in five years, what was my mean return? What my, my average return? First stock has given 22%. Second stock has given 13%, which is the average. Okay. So I've used the formula average to calculate that. I can change the figure to, you know, this to 30%. My average will change. Okay. Anji? No, that is the, look at sheet number two. Sheet number two, this is average. Sorry, average, huh, wait a second. Plus average. Maybe I, maybe I have done wrong. Ah, Bara percent, you're right. And similarly, I'll copy this here. So this is giving 10%. Okay, fine. Is that okay? Just make the change. If I then I have not changed it. Okay. So the first stock is giving 12%. Second stock is giving 10%. And FD is giving suppose 10%. Suppose it's an FD which is giving 7. So we can make it even you know uh, say 8% if you want. Okay. And copy this 8% or 7.5% which is the current rate. Fine. And just I'll make it, uh, you know, to up to two decimal places. So FD is giving seven and a half percent. Okay. So average return is uh, here 12, 12 percent, here is 10 percent. Is that okay? Fine. So now, if you get this data, first of all, you know, why I have calculated average or mean return? So if you want to know how much a stock has given on an average, what kind of return it has given. So either you take five years or 10 year period and take an average. So for Making it simple, I've just taken five years. The longer it is better, but the company should not have changed its characteristics. If the company has changed, it is becoming more profitable now compared to what it was. So the recent data will tell you what is the mean return rather than taking a long period of return. Okay. Assume in this five years, the company is, both the companies are stable. They are, okay, fine. So this company is giving 12%, this is coming 10%. This is historical returns, isn't it? 
Now, this is one method to calculate the mean return. Okay. The second method is basically that you just play out three uh, probabilities, three possibilities. Boom, recession, normal period. And just find out how much return this stock has given in the boom period, how much it is given in a, a recession period, how much it is given in a, a normal period. And assign probabilities to each scenario. Looking at the future, that you know what is the chance of a boom, what is the chance of a recession and what is the chance of a this thing. If you have you know access to information, you can give some kind of a probabilities and multiply probability with the return, and that will give you the mean return of the stock. So that is maybe a better way of doing it, isn't it? If the trika kya hota hai, you just give three kind of scenarios: boom, stable, recession, and through historical data calculate how much that stock has given. And this period of boom recession is based on your past and future prospects of the economy. Okay. If you think the economy is 70% economy is economy is going to boom, then give 70%. If you think there's only 50%, it depends upon your own assessment of the situation of the economy of the country. So that would be a still a better method to calculate the average return. Assume that we have calculated this return on that basis. Though I have done it on a five-year basis. So this stock is giving you 12%, this stock is giving you 10% on an average. So which stock you are going to put your money? FD is giving 7.5%. Where are you going to put your money? Uh, 12 Okay, of course, you say stock FD is not having any risk, so people don't want to take risk. Maybe they can invest for one or two years, but for putting for a long period, we always know the stock market does well, so you will say 12%. Okay, but the answer is not so simple. You have to calculate the standard deviation. How volatile is the stock? Okay, here I have taken a formula called standard deviation, so I can just put it here, match this thing, go to formulas. Go to, you know, uh, standard deviation, go to the, uh, you know, standard deviation formula. Rather, sorry, rather what do you do? Put a plus sign and put standard deviation. So, standard deviation, uh, I have used what? V, okay. So, so search for standard deviation formula, okay, St standard Oh, spelling can standard away. Uh, S T D uh, V. So pick uh, V. V wala formula le liya. Batao mo formula humne V kyu chuna? Okay, sorry. So ye uh, S T D V. Okay, and then put a tab and select everything. Select everything and close your bracket and enter. So it will give you. A return which is coming to uh, uh, here, so it's coming 23%. Okay, so let me just see what error I have done. So this is right up to 8, 6. Okay, so I have to select from say this E3 to A, E8, and I selected here E3 to E9. We will take 8 to 8. 25 again. So I've copied this formula again here. Okay. Fine. Is that okay? So now you are getting a standard deviation of 25.24 and second stock is giving you 3.82. Which stock is more of, more volatile? A or X or Y? X is Y because the variation from the mean is very high. Standard deviation tell you how it's varying. You know, sometimes it's giving minus, sometimes plus. Whereas, you know, stock Y, of course, there is no minus here. Of course, we can put even a, one minus also here. Okay. Suppose I put my minus 5% here. So it comes to 7.33. Okay, fine. Abhi aagya, 7.33 aagya. Or abhi bhi jo hai, stock E, stock, sorry, X is more, less, more volatile than stock Y. Isn't it? So what we do is, we just plot this th same numbers here. Okay, mean return. So I'm just going to copy this. Mean return here, if I have not copied. So this stock is giving you this okay fine is that okay now i put the standard deviation here same standard deviation i have copied here okay fine is that okay then i divide the return by the standard deviation so pehle figure kya hai 0.5 second ki figure kya hai 1.1 okay so this tells you return per unit of risk so if i take 
how much return I get for one unit of risk. Okay. So, which is better? I get 1.1% return per unit of risk in Y. In X, I am getting 0.5 return per unit of risk. So, I have to take more risk to get that return. So, Y seems to be a better choice because this is less volatile and this is giving you higher return per unit of risk. Ek risk unit lene mein kitni mein return aati hai. Is that okay? Have you got it? So, if you apply this formula, then we say stock Y is better compared to stock X. So, you have to put money, okay, then I must invest in stock Y if, you know, the risk also, I capture the risk also, isn't it? Now, there is a ratio called Sharpe ratio. William Sharpe was the guy who got a Nobel Prize for making this ratio of many other things, therefore not with this issue, but so many other things which he has done. We look at the risk-free rate. Now, risk-free rate of the government is 7.25. Okay. So, what I did was, I applied the same formula, but here I minus the, the risk-free rate. RF minus RF. And then I have the ratio again. So, here also I am getting uh, 7.25. अच्छा सीख वो रेशो ना भी कैलकुलेट सही नहीं हुई है रिमूव करो ये जो है ई थर्टीन सो लुक फॉर्मूला फॉर्मूला इज लाइक दिस सो ट्वेल्व माइनस सेवेन पॉइंट फाइव डिवाइडेड बाय यू नो रिटर्न पर यूनिट ऑफ रिस्क व्हिच इज फॉर्मूला इज ओके बाय फॉर्मूला तो वही है ना सिर्फ स्टैंडर्ड सिर्फ मैंने क्या करा है Stock minus, you know, 12 minus 7.25 divided by 25.24. Is this the formula I'm getting? This is E13, E13 minus H3 divided by E14. E14, yeah. By So, formula is But now what I'm getting? Of course, this is a new thing which I have. The formula is saying that which is having a better sharp ratio. X or Y. So, sharp ratio says that you should be putting the money in X rather than Y. Because, you know, by putting money in a in a government bond, you are getting 7.25. Here you are getting only 8. So, aapko sirap 0.75 hi jada mil rahe. Isn't it? Fine. So, let me just check with the formula here is okay. F14. Formula to bilkul sahi hai. But it is giving you a different kind of a, you know, picture. Isn't it the sharp ratio? 0.78 is there. Okay, one second. I will divide it. Sorry, minus it. Okay. 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 This is And I have this. This is minus it. Okay. And put a bracket here. Okay. And divide it by. This figure, which is standard deviation. So, 0.3 to other. No, 0.3. And this is what I have to do. 12 minus 7.5. I am just redoing the formula. Okay. And dividing this by uh, the standard deviation, which is this. So, I get 0.8, isn't it? Suppose I make this uh, a slight change here, okay? I make 26% here. Pehle wale mein mene 26 kar diya. To ab dekho aap. Ab is mein kya hua dekho? Is mein bada chaya hai ki ab, ab mene return mein pehle saal mein 26% return kar di stock ki, stock buy ki. To is return iski 10% aagi. Iski 12% hai, iski 10% hai. I made slight change, okay? I'll redo it. So, now when I calculate the return, I'm getting 0.26 here and 0.18 here. So, both the formulas, the first formula and the second formula are giving consistent result, isn't it? Dono say, aapko pata chal raha hai, stock Y is better, isn't it? Fine. But when I change this back to, you know, 16%, then I get stock X is more better, isn't it? Haan, 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 bilkul, bilkul, sorry. Haan, wo main bata. This is risk adjusted return per unit of risk. Which means that, you know, if you are getting, just listen to me carefully, you are getting here 12% return, fine. Have you put 
in a government bond you would have got 7.25. What is the extra return you are getting? 12 minus 7.25, which is around close to about 4.75. So, for this only you are taking risk, isn't it? Otherwise, to apne risk na liya hota, tap, you would have invested in 7.25. So, the better number would be the difference <laughs> divided by the standard deviation. So, that would be much better formula for assessing your, I mean, whether you should put money in a stock or not. हाँ जो हमने देखा ये जो हमने देखा ये standard deviation है इस stock का this is 25 percent more volatile this stock has got 7.3 percent volatility so you look at this stock this stock is more riskier this stock is less riskier now this risk when you are taking on what the return over and above the risk free rate so which means कि if you would have not taken any risk you would have got 7.25 percent return so the difference is the return which you are getting because assuming a risk. So, now I have calculated return per uh, risk adjusted return per unit of risk, which is a better formula, isn't it? Fine. So, this guy said that the sharp ratio is an ultimate ratio for deciding, you know, higher the sharp ratio, that stock would be better. Just the sharp ratio jada hai, that stock is better. Isn't it? Now, we just came with a conclusion here ki agar ye जो होता यहां पर क्या हो रहा है यहां पर यू आर फाइंडिंग स्टॉक एक्स इज बेटर बिकॉज हेयर यू आर गेटिंग जस्ट एट परसेंट रिटर्न एंड रिस्क फ्री रेट इज ओनली सेवन पॉइंट टू फाइव सो यू आर गेटिंग जस्ट पॉइंट सेवन फाइव परसेंट रिटर्न सो दैट्स वाई द टाइड एज टर्न टूवर्ड्स एक्स इज इन इट फाइन बट अगर मैं इसकी सपोज थोड़ी सी रिटर्न बढ़ा दू इसको कहीं जैसे भी बढ़ा दू मैं थोड़ा बहुत ऊपर नीचे करके मैंने एक ही फिगर में चेंज करा सो नाउ इट इज गिविंग टेन परसेंट रिटर्न far above the risk free rate isn't it now i find the sharp ratio of y is better so the sharp ratio is a better you know mechanism or a better matrix to understand which stock is better rather than the first formula which i used which was you know return divided by the risk so i should have taken risk adjusted return and then divided by standard deviation to calculate the uh, to calculate this uh, you know to uh, uh, i mean where should i put my money अब इसमें क्या आ रहा है अगर मैं सब ऐसे कर देता हूं तो मेरा जो है ये बेटर आ रहा है उससे फाइन सो एनी वे इफ सपोज द रिटर्न वाज जस्ट टेन एट परसेंट सो आई वुड नॉट बीन बाय पुटिंग माय मनी बिकॉज दिस वाज गिविंग एट परसेंट रिटर्न फाइन सो द फॉर्मूला आल्सो व्हेन आई पुट इट टू एट परसेंट द फॉर्मूला ऑल्सो टेल मी टू गिव पुट माई मनी हेयर नॉट देयर बिकॉज देयर आई एम जस्ट गेटिंग पॉइंट सेवन मोर रिटर्न कंपेयर टू द गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड इज दैट ओके so that's a new learning for me okay i always thought the form, both formulas will give me the same kind of a uh, you know uh, uh, this thing so this formula is telling you that if the return is very small then it may happen that the volatile stock will be better than a less volatile stock because the returns are very small in the case of second okay so i change my number so ultimately i'll just try to put this number so i'll try to put num here 26% and and just do it okay fine this is just for explanation now this could have been you know like uh, 20% here and 8% here and 7 uh, 9% here okay and 13% here so i would have still got 10% maine to wahan ek stroke mein kar diya tha but actually you know stock will not give like 20% ek ma ho gaya matlab itna bada wide fluctuation nahi hogi na so fluctuations will be I mean, within certain levels, okay. Like twenty percent can be the maximum return, and minimum was mine. But is that okay? Have you got the? Huh? For calculating sharp ratio. Huh. That become because you know then the formula is not complete. Return per unit of risk. Just hold on. Just just listen to me. There is a formula. Me, a numerator, a denominator. Numerator, me, I am taking full risk, full return, and capturing the risk in the denominator. Fine. So the numerator should be adjusted. I should have only the return which I have got because of the risk. See, by putting your money in a risky security, I should only take that risk. Only the risk uh, return which I have got more because of the risk. Isn't it? So how much I have got more? Uh, uh, you know, it is uh, 12 minus 
the 7.25. This is the return I am getting because of the risk only. Na? So, my numerator and denominator should be consistent. Na? Look at why I have done is the, to make the numerator and denominator consistent. The numerator has been adjust, adjusted for the return. I minus the return which I have got without taking any risk. This is risk I am risk. Who is taking risk? Difference between the two. 10 uh, you know, 12 minus 7.25. Fine. That's why I am taking So, numerator and denominator are not talking in the same terms. Is that okay? Have you got it? Okay. So, this is called the sharp ratio. Now, there was another guy who came and he said trainer ratio. So, there was some guy who was trainer, whose name was trainer. He came much after the sharp. He said, look at the trainer ratio and not the sharp ratio. Now, of course, he never said, look at my ratio and not the, the, the sharp ratio, but he says trainer ratio is more important. Okay. Now, in this case, we calculated a beta. Okay. He calculated the beta of the stock. And instead of dividing by standard deviation, he divided by beta. Okay. We will just learn after some time when we do the beta. I will come back to this and we will put the beta of this stock okay, to understand which stock is better. Okay. So, let us go to and understand the beta now. Now, we come to beta. So, before we, we apply the trainer ratio, we will understand what is beta. Read. <coughs> Please focus this very important. Beta is the most important animal. Okay. So, we should focus on that. Okay. So, how do we calculate the beta? We calculate the beta by using a regression technique. Okay. But we are not going to use, going to much use simpler aspect. Okay. Use the Excel sheet to calculate this thing. So, uska formula, yeah, we will do that. We will not go into the, you know, a very complicated regression technique. Okay. Okay, so let's understand. Now, uh, the market. What is the market? Market can be Sensex, market can be Nifty, market can be BSC 100, BSC 500. There are many, many indexes which are there, okay? So, uh, you know, like America, there is something called Russell 2000, which captures, you know, 2000 stocks of America, their movement, okay? Sensex is capturing only the movement of 30 stocks of India, but those 30 stocks are capturing all the industries, okay? Fine. And Nifty captures 50 stocks movement. Again, it is a broader index, okay, which captures 50 top stocks of India. To not top, but representing all the industry. Now, let's say I say, either I use what, when I use the word Sensex, it may mean Nifty also. It can be need a broader index than that. Suppose the Sensex goes up by 10%. Suppose over a period, like in the month of November, December, the Sensex has gone up by 10%. If suppose... Maruti has, or suppose Hero Motocop has gone up by 12%. Okay. Or other way around, if the Sensex tanks by 10% and Hero Motocop, Hero Motocop comes down by 12%, then the beta is 1.2. We take the return of the stock divided by the return of the market. So, Hero Motocop going up by 12%, Sensex going up by 10 So, 12, 10 by 10. So, beta will be 1. This is a thumb rule. This is the thumb rule. This is not the regression technique I have adopted. I have just said this is the thumb rule. If suppose, for example, Hindustan Unilever, if the market goes up by 10%, Hindustan Unilever goes up by only 5%. And the other way around also, then the beta is 0.5. So, the market will have a beta 1. That is the baseline. Some stocks will be more riskier than the market. Some stock will be less riskier than the market. Beta captures the risk. So, a stock which is more volatile compared to the market is more riskier, will have higher beta than 1. A, mark, a stock which has less than 1 will be less riskier, okay. But 
chances are the less risky stock will give you less returns also a more risky stock doesn't mean risky it doesn't mean that it will give a negative it can give positive and negative both okay so just to summarize and move further if we think the market is going to do well in next two months where should we be putting our money high beta stocks or low beta stocks high beta stocks or low beta stocks high beta stock if you think the markets are going on a slippery slope and there is a recession or there is a you know market is going to correct for example not the market the economy is doing well the market has actually overdone the market is going to go down the next month so where should be i putting my money low beta stock or high beta stock low beta stock fine so uh, you know this is kind of a strategy where we think the markets are going to do well in the next 5 years we can put our money 80% of money or 70% money in high beta stocks which are giving you far, far greater returns because they are going to do much well than the market as a whole sensex may go back 15% in a year your stock may go back 20% isn't it any want that you should ha ji ha for uh, if you think that the prospects of the economy is very good then you should be putting more into you know high beta stocks fine right? that is one of course there is no uh, you know a kind of a full proof mantra but this is just way one way of looking at it okay fine is that okay now how do we calculate beta through this regression technique before we understand that is that okay is samajh aage it doesn't require any explanation just go through if you still have a point you can raise a question but they will get answered because when we do the calculations of beta normally you know gold companies or gold they have a negative beta you know when the gold goes up the share market comes down like what is happening at the moment gold is also going up the world market is not going up they are going down okay but indian market is going up because india stands solitarily separate than all other you know nations most of the us there is a you know in germany there is a recession england is in bad situation america also we know you know they have, they have raised the interest so much that they think that there will be some kind of a recession which may come through next year so in this time generally the gold will move just the opposite way what the markets are moving so a gold will always have a negative beta compared to the the markets okay or a gold uh, mining company a gold mining company the listed in a stock exchange mein, so they will do you know they will not do well when the whole markets are going up gold mining companies will go down okay so that is what it's saying so it will have a negative beta is that okay now how do we calculate beta so this is the most important one and you are going to just you are going to do it yourself abhi aap khud ek data nikal ke karo please udhar kya hai kya naam hai ab idhar suni abhi to important mein aa rahe hain please listen to me for next 20 minutes please play attention here and there going to be a quiz from this agar miss kar diya to phir idhar bagla lagta hai roko ओके, सो वो मैं तुम्हें झाक वो मैं तुम्हें झाकने नहीं दूंगा तुम्हें यहां बैठाऊंगा जब तुम अपना अपना क्विज दोगे यहां बैठोगे ओके सो अच्छा यू टॉकिंग अबाउट द बीटा यू लाइक द बीटा अच्छा जस्ट अब अभी अभी हम यहां आ जाते हैं फिर बाद में बीटा के बारे में मुझे बताना क्या बोलू सो अप्रोच इज फॉर एस्टिमेटिंग बीटा historical market betas okay betas from fundamentals accounting beta so there are three ways to calculate beta historical market beta so which we are going to understand now then betas from fundamental which we have to complete before we end the class today and we have to quiz also so please focus last is the accounting betas which we are not going to focus at all okay historical market betas the 
So basically, you know, the last line is very important. We are going to regress the returns of the stock and the market. Okay. So we understand how do we are going to regress. So we learn now. So this is the equation. Okay. By regression technique, we use this, uh, you know, technique. Fine. Where, uh, you know, the return is equal to A plus B into RM. Where B is the beta, RM is the return of the market, and A is basically, so this, you know, A is the intercept from the regression, which represents the firm risk. Jo firm risk hai, wo A hai. Aur jo B hai, wo beta hai. Okay? Fine. Now, there is a very shortcut method of calculating beta without, I mean, again, this is a regression technique is taking covariance of the market versus the stock divided by the variance of the stock. We are going to even use this formula to calculate. But as the formula comes, I'll explain that, okay? Now, we will get this kind of a graph, okay? Fine. So, let's understand what is this. So, let's go to the, you know, Excel sheet. Back to the Excel sheet. So, you just go to your file and open a, a file called beta. Ye file nikali hai. Reliance wali file ko liye. Reliance karke ek file hai. Okay. Fine. So, uh, this file is open with you. <clears throat> from where I got this information, you are going to just pull out and have an information for Hero Motor Corp yourself. Okay, fine. First, we talk about Reliance and then you do it for Hero Motor Corp and calculate the beta flow. So, this is this file open? Okay. Now, Reliance Industries. Date, the price of the Reliance and the return. Okay. What I have done is, I have gone to, you know, Yahoo Finance. Just go to, you know, just go to for a file, go to, you know, Yahoo Finance. Okay. Go to Yahoo Finance. Go to Yahoo Finance. Or uh, yeah, stock market, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, first say Reliance. Just try to find out Reliance. Reliance again. Okay. So, you have Reliance. Reliance, nikal lije. Have you got Reliance? Go to historical data. Go to historical data, which is there on the summary chart conversations, statistics and historical data. Go to historical data. So, you have historical prices here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go to uh, frequency, make it daily to monthly. Now, you have daily mini calls. Daily stock price, monthly stock price, and weekly stock price. So, I have cut monthly. Okay. So, it's uh, December 16 to December. Pure salka nikla hua. Ek salka. Apply. 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 Kar do pehle. Apply. Kar diya. Or, fir ye aapke paas ye aagya. ओके okay? ये फिगर आप आप देखोगे तो वहां मंथली डेटा आ रहा है आपके पास यहां इसको डाउनलोड कर दो ये देखो डाउनलोड आ रहा है डाउनलोड एंड सेव एंड इन द मीन टाइम डू इट फॉर हीरो मोटो कॉप आप निकाल लो सेम वे कैलकुलेट फॉर हीरो मोटो कॉप आल्सो ओके आई एम नॉट डूइंग इट आई एम जस्ट लीविंग इट फॉर यू this का मर्जी कर लो यार जो आपको प्राइस लगता है कि कितना प्राइस है 21 22 23 को प्राइस है ना है वो देखना पड़ेगा एनएससी है कौन सा है चलो अभी ये रिलायंस पे लोगे अभी रिलायंस पे रोगे रिलायंस पे रोगे ये आपका आ गया डेटा है ना अभी आते हैं ये आ गया जस्ट लुक एट दिस ओके जस्ट लुक एट द वे एंड देन यू कैन डू इट फॉर एनी कंपनी यू वांट यू कैन डू इट फॉर आई मीन दिस थिंग सो ओपन यू नो दिस वाज द ओपन फॉर द मंथ दिस वाज द हाई दिस वाज द लो दिस वाज द क्लोज Okay, I am just going to delete that. I don't. Mahine ke us mahine mein kis price pe open hua tha, kis price pe close hua, kis price pe 
हुआ था वो मैंने सब निकाल दिया सिर्फ मैंने एडजस्टेड क्लोज ले ली ये एडजस्टेड क्लोज है देखो क्या होता है जब मार्केट क्लोज होती है साढ़े तीन बजे मार्केट क्लोज हो जाती है तीन से लेके साढ़े तीन पे जो स्टॉक आ, प्राइस आता है दैट इज नॉट द प्राइस इट इज एडजस्टेड क्लोज लास्ट हाफ एन आवर का एवरेज निकालते हैं लास्ट हाफ एन आवर का एवरेज प्राइस निकाल जाता है बिकॉज लास्ट प्राइस जो थ्री थर्टी पे हुआ होता है कभी हो गया एक पिछले दस सेकंड में स्टॉक जो था दस परसेंट बढ़ गया सब कुछ बढ़ता नहीं है ऐसे भी हो सकता है तो दे टेक द एवरेज एवरेज प्राइस ऑफ द लास्ट हाफ एन आवर बिकम्स द प्राइस फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ कैलकुलेटिंग योर रिटर्न फॉर योर म्यूचुअल फंड एंड वटेवर ओके इसमें से वॉल्यूम जो है ये भी मैंने मिटा दिया ये वॉल्यूम भी मैंने मिटा दिया ये आ गया और इस क्लोज को आप क्या कर सकते हो इसको अप टू वन डेसिमल प्लेस तक ले जाओ ये आ गया और इसको ज्यादा अच्छा लगाना है आपको तो इसमें कॉमा भी डाल दो और फिर इसको वापस करना पड़ेगा आपको हाँ ये आ गया ठीक है अब देखोगे रिलायंस जो है जनवरी में अभी लेटेस्ट जन, एक जनवरी तेईस में दो तेईस सौ चौबीस छब्बीस रुपए का था अभी आ गया चौबीस सौ छियानवे ओके फाइन सो दिस इज द मंथली क्लोजिंग ऑफ रिलायंस एवरी फ्राइडे थ्री थर्टी दिस वॉज द क्लोजिंग ऑफ रिलायंस इज दट ओके फाइन अब इसको आप सेव ऐसे सेव कर दिया अब आप वापस गए याओ फाइनेंस में और यहां पर कर लिया निफ्टी निफ्टी फिफ्टी ये निफ्टी फिफ्टी आ गया ठीक उसी प्रकार आया निफ्टी फिफ्टी निफ्टी आया नहीं था निफ्टी फिफ्टी ओके निफ्टी फिफ्टी एज कम वो कहां जाता है निफ्टी फिफ्टी I go to the historical prices, okay, and uh, then I take uh, you know the daily की जगह मैंने इसको monthly कर लिया, okay, apply करा, download करा, इसको भी download कर दो ऐसी, okay, then I open this Nifty, सो so, निफ्टी वाला मैंने खोल लिया है ओके जस्ट ओपन द निफ्टी एंड डू द सेम थिंग एज वी डिड फॉर दिस थिंग सो डेट वाले को थोड़ा सा बड़ा कर दिया और ओपन हाई कितने पे ओपन हुआ था पूरे महीने में कितने सबसे हाईएस्ट पॉइंट पे क्या था और लो कितना था ये सब मैंने मिटा दिया ओपन हाई लो और क्लोज ये भी हटा दिया और ये मैंने इसको डिलीट कर दिया ओके एंड वॉल्यूम कितने शेयर बिके खरीदे थे वो भी मैंने डिलीट कर दिया सो आई हैव गॉट दीज नंबर सो एडजस्टेड क्लोज को जो है मैंने कॉमन डाला पहले ओके okay, और फिर जीरो जीरो निकाल दिया इसमें ओके okay, तो ये फिगर आ गई फाइन सो नाउ आई हैव मूवमेंट ऑफ निफ्टी एंड रिलायंस सेम पीरियड का अब मैंने क्या करा अब मेरी फाइल खोलो आप जो मैंने जहां बनाई हुई है ये वाली रिलायंस फाइन ये आ गया अब मैंने क्या करा ये रिलायंस इंडस्ट्री और निफ्टी को दोनों साथ में रख लिया ओके okay? आपने एक फाइल प्रिजर्व करनी है दूसरी फाइल को कॉपी पेस्ट कर देना जैसे निफ्टी की आपने रिलायंस के आगे कर दिया ये बाद में करना पहले देख लो जस्ट डू इट आप एक बार रिलायंस का खुद भी निकाल लेना ये आ गया आपके पास जस्ट फोकस एयर नाउ वट आई एम डूइंग ऑन द बोर्ड दैट इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट जस्ट लुक एट द बोर्ड नाउ इट से नाउ यहां पर क्या है यहां पर रिटर्न है ये कैसे करिए मैंने ये सी देखो यह फॉर्मूला जाते हैं पिछले दिन की माइनस और माइनस वन यानी कि मैं यहां ये करता हूं ये फिगर माइनस ये और इसको ब्रैकेट में डाला सॉरी इसको क्या था हाँ सॉरी मैंने गलती करा ये मैंने ये फिगर ली सी सेवन डिवाइडेड बाय सी सिक्स माइनस वन और ये जो फिगर आई थी इसको मैंने परसेंटेज कर दिया यार 
दोबारा बता दू इसको पहले हटा देते हैं हम फॉर्मूलाज को ये पिछले दिन की डिवाइडेड बाय द करंट डे दिस डिवाइडेड बाय दिस माइनस वन ये जो ऊपर वाली फिगर देखो ये देखो ऊपर वाली फिगर देखो ये डिवाइडेड बाय ये ये आ गया ठीक है सॉरी अब कोई बात नहीं है फॉर्मूला है मैं उसका कई तरीके होते हैं फॉर्मूला निकालने अगर आपका सपोज पिछली दफा सो अब सो था अब 120 हो गया तो 20 परसेंट बढ़ गया ना वो निकाल रहा है वो नो पीपल कैन यूज डिफरेंट डिफरेंट फॉर्मूलाज ओके फाइन तो ये मैंने निकाल दिया अब मैंने इसको कॉपी पेस्ट करा सारा निकाल दिया इसको यूं करके फॉर्मूला कॉपी पेस्ट करा तो पूरे पे आ जाएगा फाइन इसी तरह मैंने निफ्टी का भी निकाल लिया अब देखो ये जो सेंसेक्स था फरवरी में वन पॉइंट सॉरी निफ्टी रिलायंस हैज गॉन डाउन बाय वन परसेंट वेर एज द निफ्टी हैज गॉन डाउन बाय टू परसेंट है कि नहीं फिर नेक्स्ट महीने में द सेंसेक्स रिलायंस हैज गॉन अप बाय पॉइंट फोर परसेंट एंड निफ्टी एंड गॉन बाय पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट अब हम देख रहे हैं अब रिलायंस थ्री पॉइंट एट परसेंट बढ़ा और स्टॉक फोर पॉइंट वन परसेंट बढ़ा सॉरी निफ्टी फोर पॉइंट वन परसेंट ये मिल रही है आपको ठीक है अब ये फिगर आ गया आपके पास अब अगर नेक्स्ट लाइन पे आ जाओ बीटा यहां आ जाओ नेक्स्ट शीट में आ जाओ वहां तो समझाया है अब देखते हैं बीटा निकालना अब यही फिगर यहीं पर ही आ रही है ओके नीचे एक बीटा निकाला हुआ है रो नंबर 19 पे ओके इसमें फॉर्मूला क्या है स्लोप फॉर्मूला है स्लोप इज नथिंग बट रिग्रेशन टेक्निक ओके तो हमने क्या करा स्लोप निकाला स्लोप कितना है पॉइंट ये फिगर आ गई पॉइंट एट एट फाइव दिस इज द बीटा ऑफ रिलायंस कैसे निकला अब मैं यहां पर प्लस करके स्लोप कर देता हूं ओके okay? और ब्रैकेट क्लोज करता हूं और ये सब फिगर ले लेता हूं ये फिगर ली और ब्रैकेट क्लोज कर दी और फिर ब्रैकेट ओपन करी और ये फिगर मैंने निफ्टी की भी ले ली हाँ सॉरी अब मैं ये देखता हूँ इसमें क्या करा था देखो ये करा ना प्रेस प्रेसिडेंट इसमें मैंने क्या करा सिर्फ रिटर्न ली हुई सॉरी सिर्फ दोनों की रिटर्न ली और मैंने बीच में कॉमा डाला और ये निकाल दिया ऊपर देखो फॉर्मूला आ रहा है कैन यू सी द फॉर्मूला ऑन द टॉप सबसे ऊपर फॉर्मूला ओके तो मैंने दोनों की रिटर्न को रिग्रेस करा और बीटा निकाल दिया अब बीटा कितना है पॉइंट एट फाइव दैट मीन इट इज लेस टाइल देन द निफ्टी अगर ये वन से ऊपर होता तो दैट मीन इट विल रिस्क योर स्टॉक देन दैन द निफ्टी सो रिलायंस इज बिकमिंग लेस रिस्कियर इन दिस पीरियड इट वॉज लेस रिस्कियर देन निफ्टी इज दैट ओके तो इसका बीटा आ गया पॉइंट एट फाइव फाइन अब मैं आपको ये बताता हूं कि ये जो बीटा निकाला है हमने हाउ वी हैव डन बाई टेकिंग द रिटर्न ऑफ द मार्केट एंड रिटर्न ऑफ द स्टॉक यहां हमने कह लिया वीकली रिटर्न्स, सॉरी मंथली रिटर्न्स, हम वीकली भी ले सकते थे डेली भी ले सकते थे एक साल की जगह पांच साल भी ले सकते थे निफ्टी की जगह सेंसेक्स ले सकते थे कुछ और भी ले सकते थे तो पीपल यूज डिफरेंट डिफरेंट यार्ड स्टिक्स टू कैलकुलेट द बीटा ईच यार्ड स्टिक विल थ्रो अप डिफरेंट बीटा स्लाइटली डिफरेंट बीटा शुड टेक डू डू इट ओके ये नहीं है सबका बीटा सेम आएगा अब आप यऊ फाइनेंस में बीटा देखोगे अब इसका बीटा कितना आ रहा है पॉइंट सो गो टू यू नो नाउ यऊ फाइनेंस एंड गो फॉर यू नो रिलायंस गो टू रिलायंस एंड जस्ट सी व्हाट इज द बीटा और उसने कैसे निकाला हुआ है रिलायंस रिलायंस इंडस्ट्रीज है ना रिलायंस so, का बीटा निकला हुआ नीचे फाइव ईयर मंथली बीटा पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव इसने क्या करा है फाइव ईयर डेटा एंड फाउंड दैट इन अ फाइव ईयर डाउन लाइन इट इज पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव इज इट ओके तो पांच साल का बीटा और लेस वोलाटाइल है कंपेयर टू द निफ्टी वन ईयर इट वॉज यू नो इट दोलिटी इज गॉन अप बट स्टिल इट इज बिलो वन इज इट ओके अच्छा एक साइट और है अगर मैं यहां देखता हूं बीटा ये साइट आप 
इस साइड पर जाइए वॉट आई एम डूइंग इज आई एम सेंडिंग द लिंक ऑफ दिस फाइल टू योर ये लिंक मैंने आपको यहां भेजा है अगर लिंक कॉपी करना है तो क्या करना पड़ेगा पेस्ट ओके एंड आई पोस्ट ये मैंने लिंक आपको भेज दिया आपके गूगल क्लासरूम में तो आप चाहो तो ये लिंक खोल सकते हैं ये अच्छा लिंक है और मैं इसको रिलायंस पे जाता हूं रिलायंस का है इंडस्ट्रीज ये देखो बीटा आ रहा नीचे रिलायंस का आगे इस ये इस ये लिंक मैंने भेज दिया आप लिंक खोल के देख सकते हैं ये, ये खोल लिया आपने ओके जस्ट पुट इट डाउन अभी हम वो स्टेज पे पहुंचे नहीं है कि हम इस स्टडी कर पाए अब नेक्स्ट में जाएंगे ओके ये ये आ गया आपका बीटा निकालना आ गया आपको वो वाली फाइल को हम अभी थोड़ा जल्दी स्थगित रखते हैं बिकॉज उसमें कुछ लेवर्ड बीटा ऑन लेवर्ड बीटा आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन दैट सो बीटा कैन ऑल्सो बी कैलकुलेटेड यूजिंग दिस द को ऑफ मार्केट एंड द स्टॉक डिवाइडेड बाई वेरियंस ऑफ द मार्केट ओके तो ऐसे तरीके से भी निकल सकता है बट हमें उसमें डॉक्टरी तो करनी नहीं है इसको हम छोड़ देते हैं ओके लेकिन अगर हम ये कोविडियंस है हाउ ड हाउ द स्टॉक वेरीज विद स्टॉक डिवाइडेड बाई द वेरियंस ऑफ द मार्केट अगर मैं यहां पर मार्केट आर एम लिख दू तो इट विल बी कोवेरियंस ऑफ आर एम वर्सिज आर एम विच इज नथिंग बट द वेरियंस ऑफ द मार्केट सो वेरियंस ऑफ द मार्केट डिवाइड बाई द वेरियंस ऑफ द मार्केट इज वन सो Uh, the the nip the beta of the market will be one always okay anyway ye maine aapko dikha diya hai ab aata hai there is a you know because the beta can be calculated by various techniques okay by you know uh, ek to kya hai ki aap daily return lete hain monthly return lete hain weekly 5 saal ki return lete hain beta will vary okay and it is a most unreliable number unless ki wo aap hamesha ek hi tarika apnate hain aur usi se sab cheez nikalte hain so you can say you are consistent with for calculating beta beta can differ by way you calculate it so there is something called bottoms up approach okay there is another method which is called the bottoms up approach okay which is considered to be far better way to calculate the beta but this will do later pehle hum samajhte hain hoti kya hai bottom approach beta is from fundamental pehle ye samajh le to fir hum bottom approach bhi samajh sakte hain ab padhiye ओके सो बीटा जो होता है तीन चीजों पे डिपेंड होता है क्या बिजनेस है व्हाट काइंड ऑफ बिजनेस यू आर डूइंग इफ द बिजनेस इज रिस्कियर बीटा विल बी ग्रेटर देन वन इफ बिजनेस इज लेस रिस्की द बीटा विल बी लेस देन वन सो अ कंपनी व्हिच इज इन होटल कंपनी और एविएशन कंपनी और रेस्टोरेंट और आई मीन हाई फाइव स्टार होटल्स और यू नो ऑटोमोबाइल कंपनी दे विल ऑलवेज हैव हायर बीटा a companies which are in fmcg business uh, medicine business they will have, always have lower beta it's a type of business which is fundamental responsible for the volatility in the market returns versus the the stock returns uska reason to wahi hoga na acha dusra hai leverage dusra kya hai leverage ab there are two kinds of leverage beta of the company based on three things type of business the company's degree of operating leverage कंपनी फाइनेंशियल लेवल यहां पर आप एंड करेंगे हम आज ओके देर इज यू नो क्विज ऑल्सो डू यू वॉन्ट आफ्टर दिस यू कैन गिव द क्विज बड़े आराम से याद है आज नहीं तो हम कल को क्विज करते हैं तो कल के लिए आपको पढ़ना पड़ेगा तो हम क्विज आज ही कर लें या कल करें हैं आज ही कर ले तो बेटर रहेगा सब सारी सारी नॉलेज आपका हो जाएगा आराम से 
So there are, you know, just let me finish this. This is very important. I'll have to repeat it tomorrow again. So there is type of business, the degree of operating leverage and degree of financial leverage. Now the business plus the operating leverage is the part of the business itself. Fine. For example, you know, there are businesses, uh, the operating leverage, the type of business to pata chal gaya mein, ki kya business hai, jo discretionary product banata hai, uska higher leverage hoga, sorry, higher wo hoga, beta hoga, aur jo consumer stable banata hai, uska lower beta hoga. This is, we can make sense because what kind of business it is. Second is operating leverage. What is your fixed cost versus the total variable cost? Aapki khar company ke kharche do type ke hoote hai, ek to variable hoota hai, ek fixed hoota hai. Okay? So every business has a fixed cost and a variable cost. Where the fixed cost is more compared to the, to the total cost or the variable cost, then we say the company is highly, has a high operating leverage. Uska leverage jada hai. Abhi samaj jada hai Okay? Or jo financial leverage hai, how much loans you are taking. More the loans, more the financial leverage. So first of all, we must understand. Assuming there is a business which is having 100 crores of revenue. First scenario where all the costs are fixed. They are not incurring any cost. Okay. All are fixed. Okay. And second business where half of the cost are fixed, half are variable. So let's understand. If the revenue increase at uh, both the firms by rupees 10 crores. Agar revenue 10 crore hai, The first firm will report a doubling of operating income from 10 to 20 crores. Isn't it? Do we say cost fixed? Hai? Cost incur kar, ab, revenue jo tha, so se 110 crore ho gaya. So profit pehle 10 crore aara tha, ab 20 crore ho jayega. Because they are not incurring any cost. Whereas if 50% are variable, 50% are fixed, so they will show a 40% of revenue increment. Okay? Fine. Fine, the explanation is given, the calculations. So usme variable component bad jayega, fixed component same rayega. So there will be, a, the profit will not double. They will go up from 10 to 14 and a half crores. Okay? पहले केस में क्या हुआ 10 से 20 करोड़ हो गया सो so, जिसका ऑपरेटिंग लेवरेज ज्यादा है दैट कंपनीज विल यू नो विल हैव हायर डिग्री ऑफ वेरिएबिलिटी ऑफ प्रॉफिट्स ऑफ द कंपनी अगर 10 करोड़ से 5 करोड़ अगर उनकी 1 करोड़ सेल कम हो जाती है तो दे विल फाइंड देयर इन देयर प्रॉफिट्स विल आल्सो रिड्यूस ड्रास्टिकली